Settling comfortably in the solar system over 4 billion years ago, the fourth planet from the sun, just half the size of our own home planet, she was discovered back in 1600 by Galileo, and to this day, the wonders of Mars continue to grow. And with Elon Musk highly confident that humans will be on Mars by 2026, one has to ask this simple question. What the f*** are we gonna do on Mars? Welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your host today, Taylor McWaters. And while sure, it's cool to see Elon Musk smoking a blunt with Joe Rogan, talking about space and how he launched a Tesla off planet, we have to ask ourselves, where exactly is this going? Why are we f***ing with Mars now, of all planets? What, why? Only 140 million miles away, Mars is pretty similar to Earth only its days last 37 minutes longer, and they're a little colder than our days here. It's home to not one, but two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Its atmosphere is primarily CO2 with some nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, and of course, oxygen. So if we compress the atmosphere, yeah, we could technically grow plants on Mars. We saw Matt Damon do this in The Martian, but it wasn't really a relaxing time now, was it? <laughs> Space is dangerous. This isn't news. And yet, SpaceX wants to take humans there. Okay, sounds fun, I think. They have the new Starship rocket and they wanna go and start building a permanent settlement on Mars. Permanent. Permanent. Why, why do they use the word permanent? What's the deal there? Not just like a weekend getaway, permanent. Okay, sick. But you can't just order a space Tesla, blast some lo-fi hip hop in the back seat and voila, you've arrived at your destination. No, space is tricky. Space travel is all about timing. These missions to Mars happen during windows. Now these are referred to as launch windows. And Elon said we may be ready for this next launch window to send humans to Mars. So every 26 months, thanks to planetary alignment, we're given the perfect time to huck something at Mars. And then she swoops in, catches it, and she's like, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your space junk. I'm gonna go back over here for two years. And it's not gonna be cheap either. The first four people that get to step foot on the big red, it'll cost SpaceX roughly $6 billion. And once they get there in 2025, they would have to wait two years for another crew of four to arrive. That's not bad. Four people for two years. Sure, it might get kind of boring. Maybe you'll kill each other, but four isn't a bad number. You have a lot of game options with four. Code names. that's a great game right there. Mario Party, like that kills two years right there. Just not Monopoly or else the whole crew will hate each other and then it'll turn into a horror film. You don't want that. Also, way too many pieces for a game in space. That's way too many. They'd be such a mess. Just open the box, you're like, damn it. Start grabbing them. God damn it. Grab Someone grab the fives. That's a lonely couple years otherwise. It's like waiting for a cosmic bus to come and pick you up. That's great, but you can't leave. So that's also terrifying. So first thing I'm doing on Mars is I'm having a panic attack. Yeah, the second that shuttle leaves, I'm gonna feel sick. I'm, I'm gonna freak out. The planet itself is quite beautiful and if exploring the sea of dust on foot doesn't cut it, Recently, NASA shared footage of its helicopter Ingenuity taking flight for the first time on Mars, and it's pretty sick. And while it's not as cinematic as that bowling alley drone video, it's still quite the breakthrough. Drones will be super helpful in the exploration of Mars. I mean, one of NASA's rover Spirit straight up got stuck in a sand trap back in 2009. He just got stuck. The thing was stuck forever until the batteries died and then we wished it a farewell on May 24th, 2011. That was the end, that was it. What a sad way to go out. Plus this means by the time we can actually go and visit Mars, they'll probably have helicopter tours up and running. Elon Musk is also tight with Joe Rogan. Maybe they can do like a Fear Factor Mars episode with helicopter stunts, that would be something. And if you're a geologist and Earth is somehow boring you, it looks like Mars could use a few of you up there as well. Just at the beginning of this month, NASA's Mars rover discovered a small greenish rock. It discovered this rock in the Jezero crater where they're searching for life after recent discoveries show the crater once was home to a deep lake. So this rock may give us more answers to Mars' beautiful history. Dutch scientist Christian Huygens was responsible for discovering many parts of the solar system, like the rings of Saturn, for example. And in 1672, he observed a bright area on Mars that was supposedly the polar ice caps. And in July 2008, NASA confirmed they detected water vapor. So we have ice and water on Mars. This is a thing. I'll tell you what we're gonna do with ice on Mars. This is exactly what we're gonna do. We are going to create the ultimate sport. One point five million people bought that Jake Paul versus Ben Askren fight, and you're telling me you wouldn't tune into robots curling on Mars? I'll pay ninety dollars to watch this thing. I don't care. Get Joe Rogan to narrate the thing. Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's going out. He's out. He's out. He's out. 
And with these leaked UFO videos turning out to be the real deal, maybe we shouldn't go to Mars. Like maybe they're trying to warn us, hey, maybe stop being awful to each other and maybe not launch helicopters or civilizations on Mars. Just an idea, I don't know. I'm gonna drive ships that look like pyramids and warn you. I mean, we're going to witness the end of coral reefs in like the next 20 years. And we're talking about doing work on Mars. Hm, sweetie, check yourself. Before I wreck myself? Oh. Besides, we've only explored 5% of the ocean. We have lots to figure out down there as well first before we even get to Mars. But I'll save that for another What the F*** Wednesday. Guys, thanks so much for joining us on Life's Biggest Questions. I've been your host for today, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next week.